Hey everybody, it's Chelsea, and as you may notice, I am in a different location today. I had to emergency fly home on short notice back to the Carolinas to deal with some family stuff, and I'm heading back out again on the road soon. So today I want to talk about the top 10 or 11 things that you should know about your travel buddy before you guys get on the road together. This applies for whether or not you're living a nomadic lifestyle like I am or whether or not you're just going on a vacation or whatever. There are some websites that can help people find travel buddies if they are usually a solo travel traveler and they want to go out of the country or they have a summer vacation that they want to fill up with travel and you just don't want to do it alone and you find a travel buddy, these are some questions to ask them before you guys go out on your adventure together. Asking these questions before you guys get on the trip together will definitely just kind of ensure that you guys are going to mesh and that this trip will go as smoothly as possible. Nature versus cities. Before you guys get on the road together, try to establish what your interests are. Are you guys more interested in doing touristy things and visiting museums in different cities? Or are you more interested in kind of like isolated exploring in nature? Setting the expectation before you guys go on the trip will really help because if you guys are interested in two separate things, maybe you can blend them together. but. Sometimes those interests will clash on the road and it's just cool to know what to expect from your travel buddy in regards to what they want to see the most. Do they have as much money as you have? Do they have less money? Do they have more money? And what do they anticipate spending that money on? Do they want to spend it on going out at night and eating at different restaurants? Or do they want to spend it on activities and tourist things like horseback riding or museums. Establishing a budget beforehand can be really beneficial because money unfortunately can be one of those things that ends up creating problems in different types of relationships. It's hard to do when you do they drink? Do they smoke? Do they partake in any other activities that are along those lines. So if you get on the road and you're driving and one person is a smoker and one person is not, one person is going to want to smoke a cigarette while they're driving down the road and the other person might be really uncomfortable being in that car while there's cigarette smoke going on around them. If you guys do have differences and things like that, make sure you establish those boundaries and expectations before you get on the road. Some people are more comfortable going out and drinking and then some people just don't want to do that or going back to the budget thing, they don't want to spend their money on that. So just have that open communication before you go on the road so that no problems arise there. When you Expectations on rough in it. I don't know how else to put this. There is a certain amount of luxury that you can afford on the road when it comes to like if you want to get campsites that have hookups or campsites that have nice showers and things like this. You have to be able to know what the other person is expecting to and how far they're willing to go beyond the luxuries. So what I mean by that is are they willing to go boondocking? Are they willing to sacrifice a shower here and there? Are they willing to not have electricity for a night? These are types of things that should be established beforehand just because even if you're comfortable boondocking stuff like that, maybe your travel buddy isn't as comfortable with things like that and it's just good to know what makes your travel buddy comfortable and what doesn't. Still as you guys know, and as my current travel buddy knows, I have had issues in the past with panic disorder, meaning that certain things scare me to a point where I just feel like I cannot do them. And even if I'm willing to try doing them, just like in Car Carlsbad Caverns, I tried to go down in the cave, I went down in the cave to a certain point, and then I had to stop because I got overwhelmed. So. Is this person scared of water? Do they like the ocean? Do they want to try surfing lessons with you? Are they scared of heights? Are you guys gonna go, if you really wanna go skydiving, is your travel buddy gonna be down for that? These are types of things to discuss also. Like, just establish what your fears are, what their fears are, what they're comfortable with, and what they're not comfortable with before you get on the road or before you try to seek out different activities to do together. I have a dog, so any travel buddy that I have has to be comfortable with being around 
my dog. That goes for you guys too. Um, are there any allergies going on? Do they travel with a different pet, like a cat or whatever? Make sure you guys talk about this and make sure that both of you guys are cool being around an animal if you are planning to travel with one. This can be a really big deal and I know it's kind of a big deal for me. I don't have a really particular taste in music or anything. I generally consider myself pretty open. However, there are certain genres of music that I just don't enjoy as much. So if you're spending a lot of time driving in a car with someone and you want to listen to music or listen to the radio or whatever, it can be kind of weird when you're driving long distances and you're sitting there listening to stuff that you just don't like or if you want to put on something and you don't think that your travel buddy will like it very much it kind of can create like a certain awkwardness if you know what i mean because when you're the only one singing in a car i mean i'm sure you know the feeling so maybe just consider talking about music tastes and preferences and if you're gonna switch off if the driver is gonna have control or whatever the thing may be just make sure you talk about that kind of stuff <laughs> Are you an early riser? Is your travel buddy an early riser? Because if you are, great, you guys can have the day together. If your travel buddy is more of a night owl and you're an early riser, then you kind of have to be considerate in the morning time when you wake up not to wake them up and make a lot of noise as well. This can be really hard sometimes for people because even at night if you're trying to go to sleep and the other person is still awake, it can disrupt sleeping patterns. So talk about these things and maybe try to get on the same kind of sleep schedule. I know that for me, before I left on this trip, I was totally a night owl. I was awake through all hours of the darkness and I slept during the daytime and most of that had to do with my work schedule. I was on graveyard shift quite a bit so you kind of just stay in that. But when I got on the road, I started sleeping when the sun went down, getting up when the sun came up and it that kind of just became my new natural body clock thing, I guess. Just because at night after the sun goes down, there's really not a lot that you can do considering that you're living a lifestyle that's more like outdoorsy, you know what I mean? So just think about body clocks and whether or not you and your travel buddy mesh in that front. There are times when things go wrong. There are times when people are driving down the road and their camper tire blows and you really have to make a split second decision on how you're going to keep everybody safe and not panic. Or if you are out hiking and someone gets injured, are you going to panic or are you going to be able to keep yourself composed and handle the situation at hand? Knowing these types of things before you go out on an adventure with your travel buddy is really important. Knowing their personality type, knowing your personality type, and maybe preparing for any types of situation that doesn't accommodate those personality types can really, like, quite literally save a life one day. So for me, beforehand, before I left on this trip, I was a total planner. I wrote everything down, I had a schedule, I had times, I was never late. I really was adamant about a time schedule. However, my goal on this trip has been to be more flexible and with that goal I actually have become more flexible. I don't plan a week ahead now. I don't plan activities. I don't plan where we're gonna be or anything like that. Like I don't even plan dinner. Basically I am very much in the day. I am very flexible. If we feel like going out and exploring that day we can. If it rains all of a sudden and we can't commit to some plans that we made. I don't care. I'll chill for the day. If we get bored of a place, let's leave it. I don't care. I have become that way and I'm totally cool with that. But your travel buddy may be totally the opposite of you. Maybe they want to know where they're going to be in a few days. Maybe it gives them peace of mind. Maybe it's for safety reasons. I don't know. But whatever the case may be, some people like to plan. And if you're going to be with someone that likes to plan and you're a flexible person, then that should be okay with you. But just know that Sometimes if a planner's plans fall through, it can cause them a lot of stress and anxiety. So just be willing to work with a person, whatever their needs may be. In your downtime, you are going to have days where it's raining or whatever, and you just don't want to do anything that day. So are they independent? Can they go off and explore the city that they're in? 
by themselves or do they constantly need you to be with them um, when you guys are just chilling at your campsite or hotel or wherever you are is it cool what there's quiet time can they be over there watching Netflix on their computer and you be over here doing some work on yours just think about independence can they cook for themselves can they do their own laundry like things like this you know what I mean like you don't want to have to baby somebody and I understand that some people need a little bit more attention than others and that's totally cool but just make sure that those things are talked about beforehand so I think that concludes my top 11 things that you should ask a travel buddy before you go out and travel together I think that these things are just really good foundation questions that you can find out about another person to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible as always, I totally wish you luck on whatever adventure you decide to take in life. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated with my nomadic travels or if you are looking to live this lifestyle yourself, I do try to post weekly videos giving you guys tips and advice on everything that I've learned so far. I want to welcome everybody that is new to my channel. I want to give a huge shout out to Myra and... I am just excited to have you guys here. One more update that I do want to talk about. I have been doing live streams as much as I can lately. It's been such a cool way to get to know you guys on a personal level. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that joins in on those. I try to do them twice a week, but I don't have designated days like I wanted to. Just because it really depends on the amount of service that I have on my phone. Because I do use my phone as a hotspot. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. Thank you guys again for watching this video. I hope that this gave you some good tips on your future travel buddy and I will see you guys in the next one.